Now we're ready to implement Newton's method. We've already come a long way. In our implementation, we have a lot of sharing between square roots and cube roots. We have one place in which we've defined how to iteratively improve something. We have one notion of approximate equality, but we can do better. The thing is, we still have to know these magical update rules for square root and cube root. But both of those are just special cases of Newton's method. So let's get rid of them. And instead, just come up with a general notion of find zero, which takes in a function and its derivative. It defines a close function near zero, which takes in x and returns whether when I call f on x, I get something that's approximately equal to zero. Okay, now find zero is just going to use our improve function, and it's going to use a Newton update, something we haven't defined yet, which is a function of f and its derivative. And then for close, we'll use uh, near zero, which we just defined. Okay, next, we need to define the Newton update. And that's what we looked at earlier in the lecture. So how does it work? Well, it's an update function that takes in an x and gives us a better x, which is x minus f of x divided by df of x. Okay, so now we have a way of finding zeros using Newton's method. We have the Newton update itself. Now we can define a square root. So a square root of a, you compute by defining f of x as x times x minus a, defining df of x, the derivative of f of x, by returning 2 times x, and then calling find 0 on f and df. And we had a square root down here. We don't need that anymore. Let's see if it works. Square root of 4 is 2, of 16 is 4, and of 2 is the square root of 2. So we've defined square root, we could define cube root. Let's use some lambda expressions this time. It will just return find 0. What's f? What's well, a function of x that returns x times x times x minus a? And what's df? Well, that's a function that returns 3 times x times x, the derivative of x cubed. Cube root of 729 is 9. Fantastic. Now, how do we take the sixth root, let's say? Well, we can do that just by writing down x to the sixth minus a and its derivative. But why not we do something entirely general? So our general version is going to be uh, that we know how to raise a number to a particular power. Let's call that power. So x to the nth power, we can get just through iteration by storing the product of all these x's and how many we've multiplied together. While k is less than n, product and k both get updated. Product is whatever product was before, times x, and k is k plus 1. Okay, so we know how to raise a number to a power, which means we don't need square root anymore, and we don't need cube root anymore. All we need is a general root, which takes the nth root of it. And how does it do it? Well, it defines f of x to be x to the n minus a. It defines df of x to be n times x to the n minus 1. And then we just return find 0 of f and df. At which point, in one fairly small program, 
we have from scratch written a function which can take the square root of 4, the square root of 16, the cube root of 729, and even the sixth root of 64. All with Newton's method, a method for solving all problems, as long as they're differentiable.